Welcome back. This is an update video on the Akai Stereo Cassette Deck Model CS703D. In the last video, or my initial video, of this unit, I spoke badly of its auto stop mechanism and that the machine was pretty much unusable. Well, since that video many, many months ago, I have fixed the problem, and it has left me with a very high quality machine. Some would argue on that that Akai is not top quality audio, but it does a very good job. I mentioned in a comment on the uh, on that video that I had fixed it and that the recording uh, was very good, that I could record through it and had really good quality. Well, a commenter stated that he'd love to see a video on that and how it worked with this machine. Well, here is your wish granted. So basically, I have the machine turned on. I have my uh, my Pioneer receiver amplifier turned on. I have it switched to the mode to record off of my television. So basically I have my Samsung Smart TV and I have it hooked up to a piece of audio that I hope will not get a content match. And we're going to record. So I have a basic Maxwell, one of these long running, uh, really like, it's, it's a 90 minute long cassette. Uh, basically just because that's what I had laying around. None of them were damaged in any way, and they, they worked rather well. The audio quality is, of course, not metal quality, but it's it's really quite good. So, basically, I have my levels set up, and I'll, I'll show how that all works. This does have Dolby noise reduction, just basic noise reduction. No A, B, or N, or whatever, or S. It's just Dolby noise reduction. They didn't know any better versions of it were going to be created. So basically that's all it has and it can only switch between chrome tape and the normal. So yeah, so there's not really a whole lot that goes into recording with this machine. It's very simple. It's probably the most simple I've seen, even including some um, really badly made units that are put in those uh, all-in-one. So it's a very simple mechanism to use. So basically I have the music queued up on my TV. It's just some jazz music. Hopefully it won't pick up any content matches. I don't know how it could. It would be amazing if it could. So I'm just going to hit play and we'll, and we'll adjust our audio as we go. So basically you can't hear anything at the moment, but the moment that I put it on to record, you will be able to. So basically, you hit record. So just some basic jazz music. So we have our levels. Once the next song starts, I'll just kind of... So you have your left and right levels. With the age of the tape that I'm using, I try not to push it too highly. I don't want it going into the red. That seems to be a rule of thumb. And of course I have them both adjusted right to that level where they're just about to peak into the red, and they're not exactly equal. Really does depend on the audio source that you're getting in. I'll just let it record here for a little while. I can also put on noise reduction for a little while. Note that it was around seven. And I'll take it off. Okay, so that should be good enough. And then we can rewind it back to when the little counter says zero. And we'll play it and we'll see how it sounds. And it sounds 
really good. All of my recordings come out almost perfect, one to one. So let's see how it sounds. Now something to mention, when you're recording anything onto ferric tape, it is going to amplify the bass that is involved. So if you are if you already have bass heavy music that you're recording off of, let's say a TV or another audio source or off the radio, if you're recording it onto ferric tape, whether that be a normal 8-track or whether it be reel-to-reel -reel or, or in this case a cassette, it will amplify the bass. So you'll have a lot more bass, which in, for most people I think would be a quality to have. So. But let's just hear the quality. So there's the Dolby noise reduction kicked off. We had it on there for a little while, and of course it helps if you have this on while that happens. But So if we rewind, we remember that we turned on the stuff at around 7. Let's see if we can tell the difference. Now that I'm not talking. It makes it a lot brighter. I can't really tell much of a difference. Then it's about to switch back. There it goes. So, so basically the audio quality that I'm getting from this is very good. Um, I've recorded just a whole bunch of different songs of different variety, classical, rock, I've, you know, jazz, as you can see, and it does it very, very well. I've also just done um, audio recordings of just people talking, you know, just vocal, and very, very good, very crisp quality sound. I've recorded on other cassette players before, and I haven't had as good a quality. Um, few Panasonics, a bunch of Realistics, a few Pioneer machines as well, and I just haven't had this good a quality, and I'm actually very happy with it. And you can also tell by that clip, it's not making that annoying auto-stop noise anymore, and you can just let it play. But after I'd repaired the auto-stop mechanism, I noticed that it was a little slippy. Uh, the belts were slipping just as tight uh, a little bit, so I had to um, replace the belts. It was a nightmare, to say the least, but it was worth it, because now it, I, I had no issues. And another thing that I was having problems with, and if I take the tape out of here, which is kind of hard to do where I am, but, and then you can just pop off this outer thing. It's really easy to clean the, the tape head, but I was experiencing a problem where when I had this closed and playing it, that the tape was resting a little too low and thus it was dragging. And that was also adding on to the lack of quality that I, I was getting in my playback. So a lot has been improved and I'm very happy with it. Uh, I have fixed that problem as well. It's just one of these little prongs that holds it in place. Didn't quite, it, it had slipped after all these years and now it's back to being in uh, almost perfect quality. Forgot to put this back on first. And of course, they designed this to have this to be easily removed because it's hard to clean these things. Usually, it's even harder to clean an 8 track player, but no one <laughs> ever thought of a solution to that. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching this update video. If you have any questions on recording on it, it's, it's very simple with this machine. It's probably the most simple, as I already said, that I've seen on any any kind of machine, and the quality surpasses any of the other machines I have used as well. Uh, of course, there was a, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, a headphone jack up front so that you can listen to the exact audio that's being sent through the machine. I just happen to have my Pioneer receiver hooked up to play it through the speakers because it's, it's more convenient for the uh, viewer instead of me trying to patch the audio in and get it just quite right. So, yeah, and plus you could see that the audio going in sounds basically the same as the audio going out. Um, I'm very happy with this machine, and I hope uh, everyone that won this update is happy with the update. 
if you have any questions about it, uh, put it in the comments down below. Um, I can put in the uh, in the notes exactly the specifications this has for recording. If anyone is interested in that, I could just put it in the comments down below as well. Um, thank you for watching this video, and have a wonderful day.